In the holy name of Jesus, amen. amen. I don't think I would have to do much convincing of you today to tell you that we are sharply divided in humanity today. Horribly divided. More so than I could even say that I have seen in my short 41 years of life. We are divided religiously across the world as jihadists are going throughout Europe blowing up people in order for people to submit to their erring ways of Islam. We're divided in this country, whether you're a donkey or a Republican with their elephants, it doesn't matter. We are divided in so many different ways and thoughts today. From what we have seen in Charlottesville to what we see in our own state with all of the divisions that are about us, we wonder Will there ever be peace? Will there ever be harmony once again? And there's even division in the church. I'm sure your church has its divisions. The people who sit in their own certain pews, their own certain voices want to be heard about what must be happening in the church just as much as we have the same things up at Grace and Grass Valley where Pastor Peppercorn is today serving. But in the midst of these divisions, and in the midst of all of the things that we see fracturing us from one another, do we ever really stop to think that the people who we are divided against, that the people who we have opposing opinions about, the people who we set up walls of judgment, do we ever really stop to think that everyone around us is a dear soul that Christ loved enough to die for? No matter if it's a donkey, or an elephant, a jihadist, or a fellow Lutheran Christian, do we ever look at one another with those lenses, breaking down the barriers that we have with one another? We are never really told what's going on in other people's lives when we are divided from them. The pain, the addiction, the heartache, the suffering, the crying for help and for mercy. No, we would rather just judge a book by its cover. And in our Gospel reading today, Jesus, in many ways, addresses those sharp divisions. And if you don't pay careful enough attention, it sounds like he's lumping in with the divisions as well. He kind of sounds like a jerk to this lady. He doesn't sound like the loving, merciful, wonderful, happy Savior that we all like to say that we know and we love. This Canaanite woman comes to Jesus, her daughter is oppressed by a demon, and she says, Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy on my daughter, for she is oppressed by a demon. And there is silence. Doesn't he see the woman's distress? Why doesn't he say something? Isn't he the one who has fed the 5,000 and the 4,000? Isn't this he who walked on water with Peter last weekend? Now this Canaanite, who the disciples are annoyed by, there's her division. She comes with the words of faith, asking for healing. Not for herself, but for her daughter. Jesus isn't showing up very well in our text today. Hasn't he forgotten who he is? And so the disciples, in many ways, try to rescue Jesus. Give her something. Tell her something. Send her away because she's a Canaanite. And the Canaanites and the Jews do not get together. The Jews looked at the Canaanites and remembered what they had done from the days of old against their forefathers. And this was not peace, love, and harmony with this woman. And Jesus says nothing to her. And yet he is still there listening to her. Remember that the next time... You pray earnestly to God and hear nothing. Even in his silence, he is still there for you. As he says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. The disciples want her away. We can shuffle her off with some of our own words. Jesus may not be answering you today, but even though he sounds like he doesn't love you, we do. There, now go on and have your own day with your own way. But in many ways, Jesus addresses the disciples and talks about the vision, even more so, as they plead to him to take care of this woman. I was 
I was not sent, I was sent for the law, for the house of Israel, not for the Gentiles. I was sent for the Israelites only. And now we see the vision. But he is not addressing her. And you'll notice throughout all of this, she continuously goes back to Jesus and pleads for more mercy. Forget the Jewish team, Jesus. I am a Gentile. Forget the fact that I don't belong to the house of Israel, Jesus. My daughter is oppressed by a demon. But pay careful attention to where this goes again. He says, it is not right to give the bread of the children to the dogs. Your politically correct radars are probably going off kilter. Jesus has the gall to call this woman a dog. That's not the Jesus I want. That's not the Jesus I follow. That's not the Jesus that I believe in. He's associated her with being a dog. Bad Jesus. Big jerk Jesus. Not my Jesus. He would never say such a thing. And sure, on the surface, we seem like Jesus here today is just adding to the division. He's kicking her. When she's down to her lowest. But the Greek gives us a little bit of an insight of what kind of dog he calls her. He uses the term kunaria, a little lap dog, a little house dog. This is not the mangy mutt ravaging through the dumpster in the streets. This is the little lap dog that maybe you have at home. The one that you give little morsels to from your table. The one dog that you might actually consider, yes, as part of your own family. Maybe not on par with your son or your daughter or your brothers or sisters, but yes, nonetheless, part of the household. His words reflect to her where she is. Yes, there is the vision. Yes, you are not part of this house of Israel. But nonetheless, I still have come to seek and save you and all others who are part of this lost and divided and broken world. And you'll notice how she responds. She doesn't respond to Jesus, how dare you call me a dog? How dare you speak to me this way? She acknowledges by faith who she is. Divided from God, divided from her brothers and sisters, divided in a broken world. Yes, Lord. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Yes, Lord, I am in no way deserving of what it is that you have to give to me. But even the little dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She is part of the house. She holds Jesus to his words and to the th even through the th thin shred of hope that he offers her in that little word of being a Korean, a lapdog, like a hungry dog begging for scraps, she holds Jesus to his word. And that's exactly where he wants to be held, by his word. Even in the midst of all of the divisions and the sin that we ourselves get wrapped up into, no matter what you have done against each other, no matter how sharply you are divided from your husband, your wife, your children, from your co-workers, or your fellow human beings. There is mercy for you. There was mercy for Israel. There is mercy for you and me as Gentiles today. And as the world is falling apart, God gathers and enlightens us and unifies us by His Holy Spirit around these good and gracious gifts that are taking place here today. We who are gathered around this altar today, around these holy things of God, yes, are mostly Gentile dogs, without any claims to anything that God would have for us. His word of law convicts us and condemns us today. As we said, we are horrible sinners beginning of this service. Yes, Lord. Yes. But go deeper. Pay attention to what it is that he now calls you. He calls you his beloved children. 
He calls you part of the familiar day, the family of God, baptized into his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness. You now are not dogs in his sight. You are dear children, brothers and sisters in Christ, inheritors of eternal life. And he does not simply have crumbs for you this day at this table. The master has prepared for you a rich feast, a wedding feast. And he bids you to come. He cannot back out of the words and the invitation that he has given to you. And then he does not want to. His words that bring you peace. Peace that the world cannot give. Peace in the crucified and resurrected Son of God. Who unites all of us around his cross. For I, when I am lifted up, I will draw all humanity to myself. He says... Peace given to you as you feast on his body and blood given and shed for you. And with this body and blood in you and with you, you are now forgiven and enlightened to go out into the rest of your life and to the rest of this hell-bent world with the peace that passes all understanding that will guard your hearts and your minds to eternal life in Christ Jesus. To Christ alone be all the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.